let's get a quick review on the equations for inductor. So the inductor, if you uh, run the current through it, and we know that there will be a voltage generated at the two terminals. Uh, so this is just a coil. Uh, that's, um, you know, current induced voltage. And so voltage equals L V I T D T. So for example, if you are given with this problem, I T equals A times E minus 300 T minus A E minus 1200 T amps is asking um, V zero plus. So keep that in mind. So zero plus means uh, the moment the voltage uh, or the current is getting injected into the inductor at time zero. So it's after you switch it on, okay? After this one is getting injected into it just at that moment. So V0 plus is not V0 exactly, because V0, nothing, still nothing happened yet. So V0 plus is just at the moment it happens, okay? So, um, so we definitely can apply this equation. So V equals, uh, then you plug zero into it, right? So V equals uh, L, which is uh, given as four milli Henry, okay? Times DIT DT. It's gonna be D. And yeah, now let's calculate this very quickly. And this becomes <clears throat> okay. Expanded. Uh, we're getting. So if you plug in here, uh, zero in here, so you're getting ones, right? So these are all ones. Uh, so eventually you're having four times 10 to the negative third power times <clears throat> this plus this, okay? And this is four times this times 7200, so this becomes 4 times 7.2, okay, so that's the final answer, the uh, unit will be volts. Okay, this is a very good example uh, to show you how to use this voltage to current equation of inductor to calculate for voltage from current. So um, this may also ask you, right, uh, find the time uh, when the voltage cross the inductor is zero, because here's a voltage, or eventually we got here. So if you want to make this one to be zero, so just equal this equation, expression to zero, and you will be able to find out T, so what's the time to make this to zero, right? And I think that's not difficult to calculate as well, right? Because if this becomes zero, <coughs> it's basically this, uh, 2400 times plus 9600 equals zero, right? Then you have this number equals this number Right, and then uh, canceled. Um, then it's ninety six over twenty four equals this. Okay, and this becomes <clears throat> e to the uh, nine hundred t is power, and then you can do a natural log on both sides. So they're still equal to each other, and this can be calculated from a calculator, and this uh, this totally uh, becomes 900T, right? So T becomes this one over 900, right?
It's not difficult to conquer as well. Okay. Um, so the power delivered to the inductor, how do you calculate that? Power delivered to the inductor. So how do we calculate power delivered to the inductor? Because this is a current that was already given to you, uh, and this is a, a voltage given to you as well. So this times this will, oh, actually the simplified one is already here, right? So here's a VT. Actually, we should change it to VT. Uh, V0 happens here only, you know? Because we haven't plugged in VT yet over here, so it's still VT. Uh, but here's VT, uh, V0, because we plug in, we substitute Ts uh, with zeros. So eventually, you have T, VT, you have IT. So to calculate PT, it's basically just IT times VT, right? That's how you calculate power that delivered to the inductor. Okay? Uh, what about find the time at which the power de delivered to the inductor is the maximum? Right, so after you uh, got here, so to find the maximum, it's basically just a um, dPT over dT, right? That makes this to be zero, and then you'll find the T um, to be the time, which will make your power to be uh, the maximum. And find the maximum power delivered uh, to the inductor. Okay, that's another question here. So let's slow down a little bit, okay? So first, maximum power, right? And then what is T? So the way to do that is D P T D T equals zero. So you can find out T, right? <laughs> okay. And another possible question is ask you. Uh, find the maximum power delivered. It's asking to directly calculate the maximum power. Deliver to the inductor. Okay, because T is already calculated, and you know PT, right? It's just plugging this T over here, so you should be able to calculate. Um, the maximum power at that time, okay? Another possible question is, uh, it's gonna ask the energy, the maximum energy stored in the inductor. Remember energy uh, equals a half and times L times I square, right? So these are constants. Uh, if you want to reach the maximum of the energy stored in the, in the uh, inductor, so I has to be the maximum, right? Because you have the I's, I's equation, which is given here, that's I's equation. Uh, so when I's equation, so when I becomes maximum, right? When I becomes maximum, uh, you have to do a DIT, dt to find that out right so you can find out the t when i becomes the maximum all right so when whenever i becomes the maximum you know what the i is and you know what the t is so both of these parameters can be calculated based on this derivative over here right Okay, so now let's look at other possible problems really quick. And sometimes uh, uh, it's called a stimuli uh, or the signal being injected into the inductor uh, could be different. For example, if the signal or the current looks like this, um, this is zero, this is 25, and this is 50 uh, milliseconds, and here's I, which is milliamps. Right, so it's asking you the uh, a bunch of different questions. So, for example, whenever the uh, current is zero, the current is zero, and you know that if the current is zero, uh, the voltage equals L dI t dt, right? 
If I is zero, definitely voltage will be zero volts. No doubt on that. And, but during this period, it's given that this is 400 milliamps, okay? So by looking at the slope over here, which is uh, 400 milliamps divided by 25 uh, milliseconds, okay? So this is giving you uh, this derivative over here and times the uh, uh, inductance, which is 375 millihenry. So this this will give you the voltage. Um, it's actually the voltage during this period. But you can see th this this um, linear curve is actually a uh, the slope is const uh, is a constant. So that's why the drift here is a constant and times the inductor inductance is also constant. So actually the voltage during this period is it's just a flat line. Okay, it's a flat line which is a voltage level. Uh, the value of the voltage is uh, is calculated by this equation, right? And so if it's asking you about the voltage in during this period, it just use a similar method. You can calculate as well, okay? And, and these are um, constants. It's not, uh, it's not a um, function in terms of T. Keep that in mind, okay? However, the, the I during this period is a linear equation, it's a function in terms of t. So keep that in mind. And may also ask you about the um, power, right? The power and energy stored in, in, a, in the inductor. So for example, derive the expression of the inductor power in, in, in the interval here, right? So the power here is zero, definitely. What about the power here? Why power here is zero? Because P equals a half L times I squared, right? So I is zero, definitely P will be zero, no doubt on that. Oh, sorry, this is for energy. Mm, for power, power equals uh, VT times IT. Okay, IT is zero, VT definitely has to be zero as well. So power zero, energy zero, okay? For here, power, um, you find out it, right? So here you'll get it, it's a function in terms of t, I think. Let's just write it down here for you. Um, so you have uh, 25, uh, 400 divided by 25, that's a slope, which is giving you, um, let's see. So got a t here as well, 400 divided by 25. So it's going to be 16 T, okay? So that's IT, and you can use IT to find out VT. It's a constant because it's L times DIT DT, which is uh, derivative of this guy is basically just 16, right? So this becomes L times 16, right? So this is given, this is uh, in unit of Henry, right? So you times 16, you are getting VT. So you have VT, you have IT, you can find out PT, right, PT. Same uh, to this part as well, to this period. Okay, very similar methods for all the calculations. I don't think there's any big problem for all these very similar questions. And I think we have covered a lot of inductor examples, uh, but there are similar questions for capacitors, and we want to practice on that as well a little bit. Because these are the two main um, in, uh, nonlinear circuit components, right? So, for example, there's a curve, looks like this. I'm going to show you probably directly on the problem. This takes some time to draw it, right? For example, this problem. Here's a capacitor um, with the voltage stored in there, I think uh, shown the figure. So the initial voltage, keep that in mind, initial voltage. Like I said, a capacitor is able to store uh, charges across it. So initial voltage being stored over here, uh, which means there will be initial power, which becomes oh, so energy, so energy, 
equals half C times B squared. So voltage is given, you can plug in the capacitance and voltage over here. Uh, you can immediately calculate for the initial energy stored in the capacitor, no problem at all. Okay. And now let's see what's, what is this asking. So how much energy is stored in the capacitor at T equals this? So this is not, a, not, not asking you for the initial voltage, but uh, at a certain, uh, a certain time. So in that case, you have to find out the uh, voltage at this uh, certain time. So the voltage is calculated by uh, the same equation that as how we model the, the current flows into the capacitor, which is I equals C dV dt, right? So definitely V becomes one over C times um, this dt. And because you have an initial voltage, uh, which is this, so in that case, V t becomes uh, this, the accumul uh, accumulated charges across the two plates, plus V0, right? So V0 is this voltage. And since we know that the equation looks like this, which is a current equation, so when we integrate that equation over here using uh, this equation, so it becomes, so this becomes 1 over C. So first write that down first. So 200 times 10 to the next is ninth, negative ninth. ninth. And um, then integrate uh, it. I'm going to just directly write it down here for the integration. So what's the integration of this guy? Um, you move this to the bottom, and then uh, do a. Okay, so it's going to be a hundred on the top and negative one thousand times e to the negative thousand t. Uh, and this has to be from zero to t, right? And then plus v zero. So this becomes, um, you can calculate it, right? Plug the T in, eventually it's going to be a function, function over T. And then you plug this T into it, you should be able to find out the energy stored in there um, at a certain time point, because this is given as well, this is the voltage over here. Okay? So the voltage can be calculated, and then you eventually pl plug the voltage into this equation, uh, you'll be able to calculate for energy. All right. Um, we can also look at another problem. Okay, let me show you. All right, for this one, for this one, okay. This is the capacitor uh, subjected to a voltage pulse during, um, the, the duration is two seconds. The pulse is described in the following equation, okay, this one. So it's basically this guy, right, this guy, here. The capacitor, capacitor is experiencing a voltage um, during 0 to 1, it's this, during 1 to 2, it's this, during, uh, so el elsewhere it's going to be 0 volts. So before 0, there's nothing, right? And then, um, I, I cannot draw it, but you can tell the, uh, tell the equation and using the equation to calculate a lot of things, right? Because you know the equations for capacitors, which is uh, I equals B, uh, C, D, V, D, T, right? You know, just using this equation to find out the current. So this is the voltage you plug in here to the derivative uh, over T. So eventually you are getting something, right? Similar here as well. Um, so it should be able to find out I, right? So it's asking, for example, the first question is asking, select the correct uh, graph of the current pulse that uh, exists in the capacitor during the two seconds in, in uh, interval. So which is actually here, because only for, from zero to one, one to two, you have something in there, right? Okay. Um, so it, so it becomes 120 T square, right? From zero to one, and it becomes 120 minus two minus T square, and this, so this is um, the I's from during these two time periods. And um, can we plot it? Let's see. All right, 
So for the first one, definitely, definitely we know uh, from zero to one seconds, um, it looks like, you know, has to be something like this, right? It's going up when t is larger, it is larger as well. For here, it definitely is dropping and then being inverted by the negative sign. Uh, but now we can take a look at it first, take a look at all the options first. And, you know, here, looking like this. So it has to be this one. And luckily, there's no other options. <laughs> you know, it's correct for the first period. So definitely, you know that this is the right answer, right? Uh, and for the second period, you can plug in the numbers and to verify some of the points on a given curve and eventually find out which one is the correct one. Okay, it's not a, not a big deal at all, right? So it's just to find out, it's asking you like which one's correct uh, graph for the current. It's not difficult to tell at all. And then you get into all these uh, parallel and serious inductor problems. Okay. And like I said, during the class on Friday, oh, on Wednesday actually. So these are pretty simple, but just, uh, you know, sometimes difficult to figure out all these uh, connections. But, but if, if you know how to deal with it, it this is like 100 times easier than whatever covered in the 70s equivalent and other things in the past. Okay, so very easy to calculate. Uh, since we know that if you have inductors in series, right, L1, L2, so the equivalent L equals L1 plus L2, right? If you have two inductors in, in parallel, and the um, L equivalent <coughs> equals L1, L2 over L1 plus L2. So for here, um, just treat these as resistors, right? Uh, even though they are not, but the way to find out the overall equivalent inductors, it's the same equation to be used for the uh, uh, for finding the equivalent resistance. So basically, this is just these two in parallel, right? And then add two here. So you can what you can do is um, so six in parallel with fourteen, right? And then <laughs> plus fifteen point eight. Okay, so that's the overall inductance over here. And then this guy is in parallel with 60. Right? In parallel with 60. And um, the overall resistance is eventually, so see here, the network is being added to five. Okay, being added to five because here and five are in series like this, all right? And eventually the whole thing is in parallel with 80. So in that case, the whole thing, just treat it as one box, is in parallel with 80, right? So it's going to be 80 plus, geez, so big. Okay, so it's the uh, overall inductors over here. And now the whole thing has to be added to 24, right? And that is in parallel with L uh, L1. So the whole thing here is in parallel with L1. So I have to do the L1 times this guy and divided by L1 plus the whole thing. I'm not writing this down, I'm running out of space. And then the whole thing here is in series with 12, right? So you just add that result to 12, so over here, to 12. So that's gonna be the overall equivalent inductance of this problem. Just need some patience, okay? It's actually mentally very simple. Just takes time to, to type it, I think. Mm -hmm. And find the equivalent inductance you know, it's just uh, a another problem. I'm just dealing with the same stuff. If you look at here, 
parallel, right? Parallel. And then comes in here, you got these two in series, but all these four branches are in parallel, you know? One, two, three, and four. Okay? One, two, three, four. And the whole thing here is in series with a parallel inductance over here. Okay, that's how you deal with it. For capacitors, all right, for capacitors, if it's asking for the voltage, overall voltage, keep that in mind. Voltages are uh, in series, in parallel, you have to find out how to deal with that kind of problems. All right, so let's see. Um, questions are so find capacitance, find the equivalent capacitance. So let's get the equivalent capacitance first. Equivalent capacitance first. So it's going to be AB, AB, since we know that uh, capacitors in, ser in series, uh, so C equivalent, right, equals C1, C2 over C1 plus C2, okay, and for capacitors in parallel. C1 plus C2, plus C2, okay? So in that case, <clears throat> um, we can find the equivalent capacitor across these two terminals easily. So if you see here, you've got one capacitor, so it's gonna be C1, let's start from C1, and then getting split into, you know, two branches like this, and then from this node, it's split into two as well. So let's probably start from here. So this uh, a nanofarads, A nanofarads is series with this 32 nanofarads, so it's going to be A nano uh, in series with 32 nano. <laughs> okay, that's a series capacitance. And then in parallel with this guy, so I have to add to this uh, 5.6 nano capacitors, capacitor. And then the overall capacitance, overall capacitance is in parallel <laughs> here, right? Overall capacitance. Is in power uh, is in oh series with eight, with this eighteen nano, and then the overall capacity in parallel with this guy. So you have to use this one uh, to find out the parallel capacitance, right? So the whole thing just copy it over here, and eventually you got three capacitors C one and this and this in parallel, right? Uh, in series. So um, it just has to be this, uh, let's call it C, whatever, CX, okay, CX. And this is C2, for example, All right? So the whole thing here is CX, and this is CX, this is CX. All right, so eventually you have the C equivalent equals one over one over C1 plus one over C2 plus one over CX. Okay, so what is C, C2? Here's C2, right? Or C1, here's C1, where CX is whole CX, which is calculated by this equation, All right? And um, for voltages, oh, it didn't ask for voltages, did it? So didn't ask for voltages. So for now, I think we are good. And if there are more problems regarding this uh, similar equivalent or equivalent capacitor, equivalent uh, inductors, and we will cover more on Wednesday next week. But now I think you guys are good to work on homework seven. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me, and I can probably even give you guys a um, Zoom office hour if it's uh, whenever it's needed. Okay, just feel free to email me. I'll be able to help. Okay, have a good break.